Matt is sleepy. We're going to call this Sleepy, sleepy Matt. Bear. Episode Sleepy Matt. Why? Because right, I yawned Dave. once? There's, yeah. the, top, there's the title, Dave. I don't He's need a text. A it's bear. called Sleepy Matt. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> no, no. I was Did telling you know. Evan, I, I got a good night of sleep. Got like eight hours of sleep in the hotel room, but then I'm like really tired. So apparently my body's used to like five to six hours of sleep. Yeah, but you okay. guys are also tired because of how good we look with our light up space bear behind us. It oh, does, look, does look good. Looks good. <laughs> it does look so good. So here's a little thing I ran across the other day, which I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh oh. Um, so we went over to Legends. You guys know where that's at? Yeah, yeah. I, used to, I was a regular we, there. We were frequent there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew me. Okay. They knew me in Party Bin by name. It's right next to the movie theater you can drink at, which I'm a fan. And of. it's yeah, Brewies, right? Yeah, Brewies. Brewies is where we had the premiere, the Salt Lake City premiere of Range 15. That is correct. Uh, if you guys Ooh. remember, that was a movie that. Uh, I think Nick Pomachano wrote and directed. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we had small parts <laughs> in it, but the um, weird flex, but okay, weird flex. <laughs> but uh, no, okay. So here is a really interesting layout, which is there's legends, there's Brewies, and it's all within kind of a strip mall scenario yeah. with some centralized parking. Yeah, and then parking. a giant sex store yeah, called Dr. John's. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. the giant sex, sex store, store, the Thai food, and then a massage parlor. So it's massage parlor, Thai food, lingerie sex store. And I'm like, okay. Sports bar and movie theater that you could drink at. <laughs> right. I don't so know got, if there's a better strip there's mall. The, not in America, there's not. Sounds amazing. But I, I think I was asking the waitress because uh, she was coming up to the, the table, obviously, to take orders for food, as waitresses do. And <laughs> hmm. I was like, do these things work together? Do you think maybe the, 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 the Thai restaurant, the lingerie sex store, and the massage shop are working in conjunction, kind of in the back room, right? So, you know, guys, guys back there whipping up some pud thai, you know, stir, stirs it and then goes back, gives the old, you know what I mean? And then the goes old. over to the lingerie shop because this is what I was thinking. The Johns are falling in love. They're going over to the lingerie shop, buying their new girlfriend some lingerie, going back, giving it to the massage parlor, right? And then they just got a big circle. They just I got a big a, I think big that's the wrong circle. order. Yeah, I, I, I agree think... too. I think you're starting at the Thai place. Okay, you're getting you're getting you, you're getting good and good and fattened up. You got some pad Thai, yeah, little low men, some some, some, yeah, some chicken satay, yeah, five hot you know, scale. and Ooh, then yeah, and then a little green you know, curry, three beers with that. That that rolls you into Doctor John's where you're buying some pornography and some toys. Mm -hmm. Then okay. you're going to the massage parlor. To use your purchases that you just got. Hey, check it out. I just got I just got these DVDs. No, I got these. I don't think it goes that way, Jared. These things. And then after you're done there, over to the sports bar at Legends, you get decently tuned up, watch a movie, continue drinking, and back at the massage parlor yeah, okay, for the okay. end of the night. What a night. What a night. That's a day. Oh well, I mean, I, I like that. Yeah, you you only had to get one parking That's spot. That's what you're not thinking about. <laughs> yeah. That's one a good parking Saturday. spot for all of that. In theory, I mean, if the massage parlor is not is more than a massage parlor, I've never been in that one. I was thinking you were going to go to the movies first, you know, Thai movies, get a massage, loosen up, then go get some lingerie, and then see where the night takes you. I mean, yeah. that's a good pickup then line. Just, then you're just kind of sleepy and hungover with lingerie. You're not thinking about this timeline one. No, because no. then you go back right. to the sports bar, and then you try to coerce the strippers to go home with you by giving them free lingerie. I don't think that would work. <laughs> Why are there strippers at the Where did the strippers bar? come from? Yeah, the, there's no strippers at a sports bar. So how do you know they're not strippers? Hey. Tell me how you know they're how do you know they're not strippers? Because I know every single person that works at at, at <laughs> what's it called? Trails. Let's, oh. <laughs> why? Nice. What do you mean why? He why? had steaks there like every yeah, day. Yeah, that's yeah. where Six I had months. a lot of dinners. Yeah, yeah. they have great mac and cheese. Good chicken fingers. Well, it, well, if you if you fuck this rotation up though. Right, so you go to the you go to the massage parlor, and you're like, okay, well, I'm just gonna get a good rub down, and then you're gonna go get some lingerie. You put on your new lingerie, and then you go <laughs> yeah. to Dude, the brewies. I, I think you get dressed up with mean. your lingerie, and you go to go to go to brewies. 
get, if you're, get a movie. If you're putting Dr. John's in the wrong order, you're not fired up to purchase anything. If you're coming out of the massage parlor after getting after getting blasted, <laughs> you're not going into Dr. John's fired up, ready to buy everything. No, that's so yeah, that's I think massage is last, first. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. massage is yeah. last. After... After, maybe, maybe you go buy a couple sex toys, put them in your pants at the sports bar so you can show off to the waitresses and see yeah. if you get lucky. And the contingency plan is getting rubbed down. Yeah, the final right? is a, it's yeah. a fail safe. Yeah. Sounds so, legit. My thought process in this, if we can transition uh, away from the Broovies and uh, Wingstop to just straight massage parlors, um, my thought process in this is. I, I I drive around obviously in Salt Lake quite a bit because I you live I, here. I, I live part of the year here. Um I saw this massage parlor that was in a in a in a really we'll call it uh less elegant portion of town. And behind and almost attached to a a quick stop convenience uh, oh. gas station. Hmm. And which I thought was really interesting because it, you know, it says like A plus massage. And I thought, okay, so if you're really, if you're, if you're part of the local law enforcement community and you're really trying to nail down on the, on the, we'll call it the, uh, the happy ending establishments, these are not hard to come by or find. Or, and that's uh, yeah, one of the places two that and I would. two together to say, hmm. I mean, there's also like, there's a website called R- Rub Maps. Rub maps. Yeah. That dot just, com? It just shows you where where these massage parlors are. So I, I mean, think I you just know. helped out a lot of so people. I think you just yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there, I, is there that, reviews that's my, attached that's to my these? question? But that's I my know question. If reviews. I, that's my question on this. Is it's not like the US Olympic team is cruising by the local 7 Eleven going, yeah, I, I need a deep tissue. I'm gonna cruise by there. These are fairly uh, obvious establishments where you're thinking a lot of truckers. Got to be, huh? A lot of truckers. Well, but the, it seems like even out of the way for the truckers, you think they want to get yeah, closer to the interstate. Yeah, you, yeah. you'd want to be right off and have showers yeah. as, as well. Right? Like if you I'm, saw massage parlor and shower rental, that would cue you. There you go. Hey, well, is it next to like a Home Depot idea. though? Because you might go pick no. up some lumber and want a back massage after. It's not next to. This was like down to a bunch of car uh, next to the car dealerships. I, I was driving by with my wife and I was yeah, like, even if Hey, you do you want to do a couples thing? And she was like, what? <laughs> Jesus, yeah. man. Yeah. But imagine if you walked into that place looking for a legit massage, like, do they look at you like you're crazy? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Matt, let's finish this thing up. Yeah. All right, guys. This is a good show. We're going to go get a couple's massage. I, Just leave a good review if you I do I know yeah. what uh, the audience feels like that listens to us on the, uh, on the, on the podcast apps. Right. Because I can't see them. Can't see oh, you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like I'm listening to a podcast right now. But you're talking. I know. He, he talks like, during podcasts when he listens to them, too. He does. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. You know, yeah. uh, I fell asleep. I was napping while listening to your your guys's and Joe Rogan's podcast, <laughs> and uh, as I like startily woke up because I I I heard everyone's voices and I thought I was on a show and I like chimed in. Oh yeah 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 San Francisco right, 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 that place, and then I realized I was talking to the radio. Right. <laughs> On, on a positive note, little little weird segue <laughs> here, but um, the adaptive athlete shoot. So we just wrapped that up. Oh, man. Uh, did you guys have fun, man? That was one of the funnest events I've been to in a while. Not because, you know, we put on the adaptive athlete shoot, but uh, being a team captain was phenomenal. Um, you know, I had Jonathan and Leah, and uh, it, it was so much fun to sling arrows. I had Bert Soren on my team. I had uh, Lucas from Grizzly Forge Knives. We had a, we had a stacked team. And yeah. That, I haven't had that much fun in a while. And it was like way more relaxed uh, comparatively to some of the other archery things I've shot. Uh, but that, that was fucking awesome. We had live music. We had the barbecue. We had meals. That was yeah, well done team for putting that on. That was freaking awesome. Yeah, the feedback we've gotten from that has been absolutely incredible. I think if we do any event every single year, it needs to be the, the 
veteran adaptive archery shoot. Yeah, because it's like, super dude, cool. everybody had such a good time. Like it was, it was super informal and fun. There may have been some fireball consumed in my group. I don't know. There's a lot more than that. Hypothetically, I, I saw hypothetically, you guys. like there were, but there's just so many people that go on those things that have huge impacts all around, and it's like it's such a good grounding thing to get back into. One of the guys yeah. in my group, Jason, like he's in a wheelchair. Incredible story, man. He was <clears throat> he was flying helicopters, or he was a, a crew member in helicopters, and randomly falls out of a helicopter. What? Yeah, what? when he's uh, they're doing a, sh- he said they were doing a show in London and he falls out. It's fine. Wakes up in the hospital after the fall. And he had gotten strep throat three, three weeks earlier. Or so somehow the bacteria from strep throat got into his spine. And when he wakes up, he's just paralyzed from the chest down. What the fuck? Yeah. And for a while he didn't even have movement in his hands. And, and then he started picking up archery after he got his, his movement, his hands back. He's like a champion archer now. Like complete. God, how do you just fall out of a helicopter? Well, they were, I think they were fast roping. It hurts. Yeah. Oh, they were oh. fast roping. Gotcha. Yeah, they were doing one of those shows in London. Oh, like an air show or something or? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, like a show Got of it. force. Dude, some of those guys and gals, man, with like some injuries were hitting farther shots and closer to the heart and lungs than I was at 70 yards, man. I was yeah. super impressed to see people shooting that well. It's awesome. Well, doing the interviews with them on the podcast and stuff, after you guys put this on last year, there's a good number of them that have been training for it all year. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's what it's all about, right? It's getting everybody together. You know, that's one of the things I really love about it is, um, you know, there's a bunch of people that have been affected by the war. And obviously, we know it because we talk to a bunch of people that have been physically and psychologically affected by uh, the wars. But we're fairly insular. And that's the thing that I've, I've noticed over the years is we're such an insular community that although we know it, we talk about it and we know, you know, um, guys that have lost, you know, their limbs or eyesight and we hang out with these guys on a regular basis. A lot of people don't know people that have been uh, physically affected by the wars and for me, I, you know, I think about it, especially the last couple of years, I've thought about it a lot. Like, how do we motivate and inspire the veteran community? And a lot of this is about the, the people that inspire me. And I think all of us that are, you know, guys like Crispy and Jay, you know, they're physically affected by the wars, wars, I should say, plural. Um, and they just get up and they fucking they crush life every day. They're not creating excuses. They're not climbing into a bottle. They're just like getting up and being as epic as they can be because they know they have to lead and inspire the community as well. Well, the interesting part of that too, I don't know how your takeaway was, but you know, we went after the adaptive athlete shoot, we went right into the Memorial day shoot for a video that we're really excited about. But a lot of it, I just, I feel like what I've learned in probably only the last couple of years is if you provide like a resource for community building events, like that's half the battle is because mm-hmm. people are interfacing and networking with, you know, other guys and gals that are in the community and nonprofits. And it's like, it, it's reinvigorating that sense of purpose that like we've had in the company. And it was super fucking cool. Cause a lot of those guys stayed longer to come do the Memorial day shoot with us. And right. we went to a, a bar in Bergheim and, you know, started slinging beers at like freaking 10 30, got everybody loose. And man, that was one of coming off the adaptive athlete shoot into that was like fucking such an honor and that was it was such just a cool because everybody's walking too. away like stoked like, and I'm like they're like thank you guys so much for doing this I'm like no 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 like thank you because that was like a fucking epic experience for me personally like I got so much out of that and learning about all those stories like you're saying about the strep throat stuff man it's like everybody has this like really different story of how they got mm-hmm. here but we're all here and that, that was really cool man I was I just want to say thank you everybody that came yeah. out and supported the event that was that was one of my favorite memories in the last couple of years. It was yeah, a good time. It, it, and the weather, you know, the weather cooperated with us. At least yeah. it wasn't blaring. We didn't get know, a hot. devil's butthole in Texas, yeah, we just man. Got, we just got some mist. That's I mean, that's perfect. perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then it all died off by dinner time for us to play music and mess around. Like it yeah. was perfect. Like, like that so, whole day just went 
really, really well. And every year we're going to get better at this. You know, every year we're going to get better at this. Every year we're going to continue to add more and more people to, to this event. I love the camaraderie of it. And one of the things, are like so many different takeaways from it, but being able to go out with your friends and sling arrows and talk shit, it's, it's a lot like playing golf, I guess, right? It's a, a lot like playing 18 holes of golf. But way but cooler. Way cooler. No, no offense to golfers, but... Yeah, no offense to you guys, but cruising around, you know, in the hill country in Texas, shooting 3D targets and talking shit with your buddies is pretty fucking fun. And we should be doing this, by the way, I think, you know, teaming up with Sean at Total Archery Challenge, we should be doing veteran adaptive shoots every tack this next year. Dud, John Dudley and I talked about that. How do we get in a veteran adaptive shoot before every one of the tacks? get people out there, get them, you know, get them the access, right? Because a lot of this is just access. If they can get into a level surface and get mobility, they'll shoot and they'll fucking crush it. We know that. Then we can do these events throughout the year, several events, give people something to look forward to, give them like the platform and the opportunity to go out and inspire other people too, to stop making excuses. Cause I hear that shit all the time where I'm like, Hey man, you know, how do I find the motivation to go out and I don't know why I'm using this, this stupid accent. But it's like, I don't know, dude, like go out and do it. Like, the fuck is your problem? Why are you why are you fucking DMing me <laughs> going, how do I do this? Uh, do it. Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, if there's a range next to your house, because I've heard this too throughout the year, not to mud suck people, but it's like, oh, uh, I can't afford it. I'm like, really? Because I got on KSL and I found at least 10 bows here locally that were under $75 that included arrows. And I'm not saying $75 is not anything, but if you're... If you're on disability, you can afford a $75 bow as well, right? So a lot of these vets are talking to me, asking me, how do I get out and shoot? And how do I do this? And how do I do that? It's like, go find a used bow, find it on like the classifieds, start slinging arrows at your local range, talk to people at your local range. But the biggest thing is just stop making excuses. That's the biggest one. It's like, stop making excuses. If you want to do something, go out and do it. Don't create some artificial barriers that are like, I can't afford it or I can't do this or you guys are lucky. It's like, yeah, I'm super lucky. I have all my fingers and toes, but we've, we are trying to put people in places that are like, yes, we can do this. There is no obstacle. I'm going to break through that and I'm going to fucking do it. And that's why I love this, like this community of people moving through this is you see guys and gals, like a lot of these people, they're coming out and they're killing it. Like you're saying, yeah. like they're, sh- they're shooting arrows out to 70 and punching super tight groups after literally having a, a bow and arrow in their hand for three weeks. It's fucking well, no, nuts. I mean, I, how many of it? I mean, even when I pulled John Lopez on the show to talk to him, I had assumed that he had been practicing like this for years. And he was right. like, no, I started I, I figured out I could do this a month before you held the first veteran adaptive athlete shoot. Like, so the yeah. guy shooting with his mouth figured it out a month before the first shoot. And yeah. like, I was like, how the hell did you get so good? Like, that must be a motivating thing for you on this because you're doing so well. <laughs> and it's like, he was telling me about, you know, he went to the doctor for his neck. His doctor was like, well, what have you been doing? He was like, well, I've been shooting 400 arrows a day with my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis wasn't too happy about that one. Yeah. And yeah. the doctor's like, stop it. Don't come at me yeah. with neck pain. You're pulling a compound bow back with your mouth <laughs> 400 <laughs> times a day. Super impressive. <laughs> it's fucking, it's epic, man. Like that stuff is so awesome. Caleb, Caleb Brewer, uh, former SF guy was in my group and that was the same story. He and Lopez had learned how to do a lot of this stuff before the first tack that we did last year. And Caleb was like, yeah, man, I just learned how to do all this stuff via watching the School of Knock with John Dudley for the last couple of months before this. And those guys are there. They have started a, a section of a nonprofit doing archery for other wounded vets. They're killing animals all around the United States. Like it's fucking cool to see this stuff 
really the 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 effects of this as far as like the information and how inspirational their stories are and how that's translating to the rest of the community. I I get so fired up for this stuff, man. I love this. I can't wait for the next hack, the next uh, veteran adapt to athlete shoot. Like it's it's gonna be epic. Hell yeah. Well, and even uh, Texas Dave says when we want to do this again with uh, adaptive veteran athletes to come out to his place too and let's do some driving. Yeah. So, some rally driving. Yeah, Ooh, that was, okay. He was like, at the end of the day, he was like, man, how do we bring this to my place? He's like, yes, yes, and yes. Right. So, awesome. so that was awesome. Well, I, yeah, and I really like the <clears throat> the intermediary stages that these types of events are because it spurs you enough to want to go hunting and like get outside and go do this because it it opens up a whole new world, especially when you incorporate, you know, Dudley's teaching into this stuff and that you see how quickly you can learn with just watching a couple of videos, like the triumvirate of total archery challenge. And I can't say enough about John Dudley. And like every time he just posts up and every time the group comes through, man, everybody just lights up and he works with every single person, like after each target, every single person that leaves there is a better shooter and mm-hmm. seeing people progress over just that small course. And then a lot of times you can like see that little light bulb go off to where like, Oh, I, I can go hunting now. And yeah. I can put food <laughs> on my table. Like this is rad. For sure. Yeah. Um, so Dudley, speaking of Dudley, so Dudley built a 95 pound compound bow for Joe Rogan. A 95 it, pound? Yeah, they call it Kong 001. <laughs> I want a 100 it's, pound bow then. I'll, 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 read the, I'll read the specs on it. I'll read the specs on it. I want a 100 pounder. It's, uh, I shoot least, a 75. I shoot a really heavy bow. You could tell the difference too when you some of the people shooting lighter ones, like the penetration of the arrow. It takes a lot to pull that thing out. So I was texting Joe uh, yesterday. So it's 350 feet per second, 550 grain, 95 pounds. It shoots, um, you're saying is two pin on the spot hog uh, is 20. And the second one is 42. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I want to know yeah. when he kills something with this. That's, oh man. It's just it, going to punch right through. It's crazy. Yeah. Dude, that thing is so fast. So you you want a hundred now? Yeah. John was saying that the limbs on it, are not going to last very long. They're going to have to replace, <laughs> restring, and re, relimit. Yeah, I, I want to say he said every five thousand arrows with that. Right. Yeah, that's the bow you don't go target shoot with because you're going to like break your deltoid. You just you you get it zeroed and then you sling like zeroed, two or three arrows out of it and a then day. You maybe go hunting a moose. A moose. Well, that that's such a big arrow. That thing's going to crash through a shoulder. It's going to. It, it's a it's a really fucking big high speed arrow. That's cool though. Like that's a that's a fast that's a fast arrow. Yeah, I can't yes. wait. Uh, are you guys? Well, I'm excited for our tree season, but I mean, obviously, it's it's only <laughs> I don't even know what month it is. April. It's April. Yeah, it's it is. April, yeah. So we get some time. We do not that much. We've got some big trips planned over the course of the next uh, few months because we're going to Alaska. Does everybody know that? Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. I'm yeah, we yeah. sure Alaska. have, Evan. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to Alaska. Uh, yeah, but I don't yeah. think you're going out to where we're at. You're going to no, go. No, because yeah, I don't want to get eaten there? by a bear. I'm going to visit the PJ Rescue Squadron, the Guard Pararescue Rescue Squadron up there. Halo um, nurses. The closest Jared's going to get to a bear is right now with that in bear the behind him. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to come, bear. we're going to go, we're going to fly over you in a helicopter. You think? Well, I do get to go on a flight with the rescue squadron. So. That's awesome. Right. I bet those guys stay pretty busy up there. A hundred percent. They're like one of the most active PJ squadrons in existence because I would imagine. the amount of rescuing they need to do in Alaska because people get eaten by bears. Or packs of wolves. I don't think that happens very yes, often. Yes, it hundred percent does. You weren't you just seeing a teacher was jogging the other day. That, that wasn't the other day. That was like twelve years ago. Yeah. I did see like one of someone riding ago. their bike in Alaska, and a fucking brown bear just like sprints after him, and he's like, "It was real." It that was Wyoming. Was that Wyoming? Yeah, that oh, was, I a black was Alaska. Bear. Yeah. No, 
This one was a brown bear. Really? There's a black bear one. I saw the I saw the I saw the black bear one in Wyoming. I'm just yeah. saying, you guys are going after something that could hunt you just as good. Yeah, and it's that's, it's finally going to be you know, real. Kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the point. military. That's what we used to do. You know. Yeah. I just hope hopefully the bears don't have AK 47s that make it yeah, a lot more challenging. It's just bears are terrifying. They're they so are. fast and powerful. Yeah, oh, you know, really another strong. good a good announcement we made um, at the Total Archery Challenge was the Black Rifle Fund. Oh, yeah. the BRCC Fund. Yeah, the BRCC yeah. Fund. Yeah. We finally we, 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 we finally did it after several years of uh, discussing it and kind of talking about it. And, and one of the big reasons why we, we didn't do this earlier was because we felt like other nonprofits, we'd be able to st- strictly do that and do it really well. And we wanted to be able to work with multiple nonprofits. Um, it, one of the reasons that we, we decided to do the BRCC fund was because, uh, you know, we saw the power of being able to specifically work through our own fund to make a uh, bigger impact for the community. One of my objectives is we'll be doing $5,000 a week to a veteran small business. So we have 52 weeks uh, throughout the year, obviously. So we're going to be doing $5,000 a week to a veteran small business. And we started with a couple guys last week, uh, long, long tab, tab brewing, brewing mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. Right there, a local San Antonio uh is that a microbrewery? It's called a microbrewery, right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, consider that. Yeah, yeah. brewery, microbrewery, right? Yeah, because they're uh, he. I, I even spoke to him. Like you, they're they're kind of new to the game too. Like they they were just like they him and his buddy were kind of done with contracting. We're like, well, let's let's try and start a brewery, and they did. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And no, they it's made, awesome. He goes, we yeah. didn't know shit about brewing beer, but we figured it out. <laughs> Yeah, and they made it through. They said uh, COVID was pretty tough on them because everything yeah. was closed, obviously. But they figured out a, a way to still get beer to people because people need beer. People need beer. Yeah, and their beer is good. They were serving it at our party for the launch of the BRCC fund. It was really good. Uh, so thank you guys for the support over there. And who else? Then, who else did we get? Uh, we did uh, Alpha Elite Performance, I believe. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I met him a couple years ago at SHOT Show. There was a uh, special forces kind of get together and he and I had a long, long talk, long conversation, uh, really good dude. And I just kept in con- contact with him. I kind of saw him just like grinding, man, the last couple of years. Yeah. You, he used you know, to have a store out in Colorado Springs. Yeah. And, and you guys know when people are in the grind, like, you know what it looks like. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. It's like dude's fucking posting. He's always active. He's always positive. Uh, and I, I, I kept kind of watching and seeing what was going on. Kept in contact with him. It was like, Hey, why don't we, why don't we, uh, why don't we see what we can do? And so our first two $5,000 donations were to former Green Berets, um, local to San Antonio and then Houston. So he's down in Houston. So yeah. then we get Texas, some Marines in there, some Rangers, you know, some Air Force, some it, Army, yeah. and all of them. This is all about being able to share, you know, the success of the company with the community. You know, obviously it's this small been, business stimulus. That's all it is. It's, hey, yeah. Hey man, were you looking at a new piece of equipment that brings your cogs down? Were you looking at this? Right. Is it, is it, or is this, here you go. Roll with it. Like, mm-hmm. like, let's see, let's see where you go from here. You got, yeah, you, you know, you got to this point. Now, well, I know now. there there was plenty of times in in our company's history, especially within the first year and a half, that we could have used an extra five thousand bucks for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, Jared and I traded a, essentially a firearm through a legal FFL for um, accounting services for six months. Look at that. That's that's the hustle, and, and that that's the was hustle. that was a very very good move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got our money's worth. If, I think. If, if our if there's any advice we can give to anybody out there that's thinking about starting their own business, it's start with good books and and someone that knows what they're doing with accounting. Because oh my gosh, it's everything. It's if everything. you have to go back and fix you it, fuck. it's going to be very very expensive, 
and it's never going to be right. <laughs> well, you can't do anything. And I've had that conversation with them, a, a litany of other business startups with guys because what they want to focus on is like, like all the sexy and cool shit. They want to focus on the marketing and they want to focus on, you know, all the things that are like really kind of sexy and cool. Yeah. But one of the reasons why we've been able to you know, build a bigger business is because we focused on the finances of the business really early. Uh, and that's been honestly to, to, to a, a testament to some of our successes. We've been able to go out to traditional banking institutions now and say, Hey, we, we have, have, audited, we have financials. audited financials, which actually really mean something when you have a certified, you know, a, an accountant, a CPA running your books, that fucking means something to banks, to the, the entire finance industry. And they, they don't get enough credit in, I think the small business startup, as far as like get, having a good finance, when I say team, it could only be you and it might only be, you know, spreadsheet for, for the first part of it, uh, as you just keeping track of everything through your own internal spreadsheets and your own internal accounting and running some models or whatever it might be, might only be that, right? But uh, at a minimum, you have to invest in that your first your first year, especially like you got to get your shit straight when it comes to finance. Yeah, great, great advice there, Hell, Evan. Hey, yeah. Man. Hell yeah, you know weed. what I'm excited about though? What? You know, I got a phone call the other day from Evan, and it was a good phone call because yeah. he told me he wanted me to take Mr. Caleb and start a new vertical of advertising that I'm very happy with. And what did you call it? I'm terrified Our right fake now. fake bullshit commercial series. Our bullshit commercial series. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're kind of already doing that. I mean, with your Bernie paper and... Yeah. <laughs> well, that's to be said. Let's ramp it up a little bit. Let's well, ramp it up. Let's, let's turn the let's, heat on this, baby. Yeah, I'm yeah. In. Let's create some dot coms that are yeah. fake landing pages that send you back into the club of Black Rifle. But... You, you went to that website because you saw a billboard of me holding up a bunch of cash saying, I'm going to be your wealth manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> JT's get you your fucking money wealth management. I yeah. think you still need to do the billboard of the, um, what's it? The Handies and Sandies. Yeah. You need Ming a Lee's. billboard of that. Ming Lee's Ming Handies Lee's and Sandies. coming soon. And then it's just like <laughs> handiesandsandies.com and it just goes to the back right from <laughs> It's just like... <laughs> I think this is going to be great. I think this is right up Jer Jared's alley as mm -hmm. far as uh, his fake business ideas. Energy Ranch. Energy Ranch is going to be uh, hilarious. Wait, but, what happened mm, with so the, the advertisement in the magazine? Did you get any responses from that? Oh, yet? yeah. Oh, yeah. They've been, they've been harassing Mason. I'm going to continue this. I'm going to continue sending people to You know he bought 12 Mason. months in the Bernie store? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I yeah. just got that invoice today. You need to do one that's something like this, Jared. It's like uh, semi-professional law enforcement services where you're not actually law enforcement, but you just dress as one and you'll follow people around or something. <laughs> semi-professional lawn care, but I'm, yeah. I'm just cutting the lawn with a katana sword. Non with a scissor. <laughs> Non-certified <laughs> private detective work. Yeah. <laughs> you just like you're, hang out. Or it's ninja lawn home, services and you cut with surgery samurai swords. services. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't go to the hospital where you're wasting tons yeah. of time. Let me come to you. Non-board certified Jared Taylor <laughs> yeah. will give open heart surgery. Does not include a metal doctorate. Yeah. Medical yeah. doctorate. Are you wasting tens of thousands of dollars on real doctors and hospitals? <laughs> yeah. Stop wasting all that money. Come, Come to JT's non-certified <laughs> doctor services in your home medical provider stuff. All I need is a tarp and a toolbox. <laughs> yeah. With our right? lead surgical Tar technician, <laughs> Medical Bear. Medical. Yeah. Using his claws as devices, <laughs> Medical Bear. Medical Bear. We Disclaimer, save money by reusing things like scalpels <laughs> and needles. Needles. <laughs> don't worry about that stuff. And These blood. things don't get. <laughs> do you have too much blood? <laughs> or not enough? Jerry's do you, blood do you donating. Feel, or, yeah, what, what is, do, you do you feel, feel weighed bloated down by your blood? And, do you feel bloated and overweight? Well, let us drain your blood. 
<laughs> Big John's blood draining mm-hmm. services. Yeah. Stop yeah. being fat. Start being lean on blood. <laughs> <laughs> then the next one is. Are you too lean? Are you looking to bulk up with some extra blood? Yeah. <laughs> Come on down to Big T's discount blood bags. We got the best. Yeah. Blood. And then it's Just like black and then... garbage bags full of blood. Yeah. <laughs> this blood looks like canine blood. <laughs> hey, we saved money by combining both canine and feline and human blood <laughs> to give you the best bulking blood yeah. you've Hybrid ever blood. had. This blood is from a cow that was strictly corn fed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's lion know, blood. Did you guys know that the uh the barber like spinning things, the the red and blue little yeah, swirl? Yeah. yeah. The the red on that used to signify that <clears throat> you could get bloodletting done at the barber. Shut that was up. A thing oh. back in the day. Yeah. You'd go oh. in there and they'd bloodlet. So you just yeah. get drained a little bit. It was because, a thing. Yeah. Because people that. had too much? They Well, yeah. It was probably for other purposes. I think they yeah. thought it was related to like getting diseases. over us. I'm just saying. I thought, thought you guys said it doesn't work like this. Now you're saying that there used it to may be have an offered like service. That. Yeah, yeah, that's no, in like the 1900s, bro. Like, I don't know heart, if they had the best medical My heart services. hurts because yeah. it's, it's pumping too much it's of got it. got too much yeah. blood. Yeah. Get your haircut and get some blood out your body. I, I saw this incredible meme the other day and I forget who posted it, but it was like, wouldn't it be great to be an old timey doctor yeah. where he just did a bunch of cocaine and just told people that they needed to do cocaine because they had ghosts in their <laughs> <Yeah>. blood. <laughs> ghosts? Yeah. You have ghosts yeah. in your blood. This yeah. is it's cocaine. What the gods want from here. It's yeah. in the gods' hands. Let's, let's take here. a bunch of hallucinogenics and maybe yeah. like the spirit man will tell me like what's a, wrong Like being with a witch you. doctor would be pretty <laughs> legit because you can... Almost say anything. Yeah, could be I, mean, like, I just sent. I, I think I know. just sent you a good meme. I gotta. I gotta check what it is. Yeah, I sent you a good meme just now. Let me see. Yeah. You Which just one is it? it? Nothing it's like the, meme transferring on it's a podcast. I think it's and great. Mose and Nagant. It's the. You know, oh yeah. Uh, let me let that. me show let me show Logan. Why you know? why, why do you hate, why do you love that rifle? That What's is not that a good rifle. rifle. It's it's, it's not the rifle. It's not. Girlfriend's and Nagant. I mean, I mean it's like an old rifle. <laughs> is it true. weird? I keep staring at Space Bear behind you guys. I don't uh, know why, but I feel like, like I'm talking to him. Well, he's, he's, he's staring at us because he's I don't see you guys. Judgy Look face how bright it is. It's so know. What, this is a good question, though, because we, we between the four of us, we have a lot of firearms. Yeah. Like, so, Jared, what's your favorite rifle? Oh, wow. My favorite rifle is my um, M14 EBR. Yeah, okay. That's my dream rifle. I saw that when I played uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 or 3, one of those. And I always wanted it. And then, you know, I finally bought it and I got it exactly how I want it. I, I feel like you can't just say what's your favorite firearm, right? Because it's like, there. I got- I had an answer. I got like four faves. I got like four faves. Then you can there, say it. There's no, there's no rules to this I know, game, man. I'm going to say it. I'm just prefacing it. I didn't it. ask yet, but- well, you asked the general fucking question. I'm going to answer. So number one is I rebuilt an AR. You've seen a lot of my photos is my tan spray painted AR suppressed. Yeah. That's very, 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 that's very nice. similar to my service rifle. Yep. And so that's like my, that's my bug out gun. If I have to grab one, it's that. Mm-hmm. And I'm nasty with that thing. But then you start getting to the other weird firearms. Like my yeah. STI is my favorite, like competitive shooting pistol yeah. that you gave me. Yeah. Um, Man, I and didn't then, get mine yet. My Mossberg 12 gauge, like there's just something about owning an over under 12 gauge that yeah. just makes my dick hard. Mm-hmm. And then probably the most eccentric and fun, I'm the only person in America that I know of that owns it, is a pump action 308 yeah. suppressed 308. That so is cool. It's, that's, that's that's really cool. Yeah, that I forget the nomenclature. It's a cool rifle. It's like a, it's like a 760, yeah. I believe. It's an old like 308 pump action yeah. that Mason cut the barrel off and suppressed it. And when he went to do the paperwork <laughs> with the ATF, they were like, huh? Yeah. We're going to get back to you in a couple of days. Cause like, I, what are you doing? Like, because it never <laughs> that's that's even cool rifle. registered a firearm like that. And uh, yeah. that one's fun. I've taken a hog hunting. That thing slaps. Yeah. Slaps. Yeah. Cause I think you, and you it's have so much more fulfilling instead of being yeah. like, tunk, 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 tunk with the yeah. 308. You're just like, <sighs> Yeah. Well, you only have like four rounds, I think. That yeah, three or four. Mm-hmm. It's That's so much fun. Cool. Logan, what about you? Uh, you know, it changes pretty frequently. I gotta say, right now, it's that 
M1 carbine I got from my grandpa. Mm. Like mm. that thing, it's just so much fun to shoot. Right. Yeah, my dad has an M1 Grand. I love those things. I yeah. wish I wish I had my Intergly suppressed 22 that I have from uh, Intergly suppressed weapon systems as a child because that is probably like if you have a kid, yeah. you got to get one of those Intergly suppressed 22s. It feels like a BB gun, so yeah. like <laughs> younger ages can shoot it, but you still have that velocity round velocity to like really learn on like target shooting and. Well, it's I cool. know those things are super efficient. That's what I killed the Gator with. Yeah, it was really. Crispy's suppressed 22. Yeah. Wow. Crispies is nice, dude. Yeah, that thing is super nice. I know Evan's favorite yeah. gun. It's the Mossberg chainsaw that I had modified into his pew professional shotgun that I got him. Mm. Yeah. That's his, that's his favorite. He definitely didn't sell that. Um, I still have mine. You don't even know where that is, probably. How are we looking up there, Sergeant Best? On target, on time, boys! Fire for Here we go! Set. You heard him! I know where it is. Where? It's in one of the safes. There's there's safes in three different states. <laughs> you can't say uh, one of the safes. I can say anything I want. Okay, we're just gonna talk about this no. too. So go give your favorite firearm first, please. Uh well, I think I think that I've got a couple. I've got a couple that I really like. So I'm gonna go with uh, like your I like the way that you laid that out because you kind of went shotgun pistol. So uh, STI, uh, I've got, uh, one STI that I really like, uh, whatever the staccato C with a comp on it. And Is your RMR, right? yeah, it's, uh, I, I've got the, the Leopold Delta point, and then I've got the surefire flashlight and a comp on it. And that thing, because it's got so much weight out front with the flashlight and then the comp, the barrel doesn't move and you can shoot really, really fast with that thing. Like your strings on that thing are just fucking unbelievable yeah. because it just stays level. Yeah, the recoil management's phenomenal. Can you uh, shoot out to 100 yards with that? For sure. Yeah. Any of the oh, recoil. oh, yeah. That's yeah. 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 easy. Uh, it's easy. Um, Glock 43. <laughs> unless you're betting a, Glock 43, unless you're if betting just, a donation if, to Obama. Yeah. Like it's is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what you used when you uh, lost that bet? Because maybe we should go back in time and give your STI so you don't miss that shot. Are we bringing that up again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we talk I have, about I have a picture of me like the full I know. Night, I, I, had to wear a, uh, I had to wear that shirt around. I'm like, just in saying, DC. we're going to travel back in yeah. time and give you your STI and not a fucking contractor budget block. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised, so don't I'm miss surprised that I missed that that to be fair. I am surprised. I don't even believe my own history because I, I'm surprised I, I missed it. I must have been like secretly wanting to day. do it. Yeah. I don't know. All I know is, is that that STI is an incredible pistol. It really is. Uh, they, and they don't give us, uh, they're, they're not advertising. So yeah. it, like it makes no difference to me if I'm doing uh, every day, like my everyday carry is a Glock 43 with a flashlight and extended mag. Um, you get an extra couple rounds in it. You, you gotta have you a need, flashlight. You need to transition over to the forty-eight. Yeah, it shoots so much better than the forty-three. The forty-three. I don't know if you've. I think you've shot mine, Logan. Right. It's yeah. just it's it. It, it kind of slaps real hard huh? because it that short barrel. The forty-eight, I believe, gives you an extra inch, and then you get an extra three rounds in the magazine. So it's. Mm. Uh, huh. I believe it's ten in one of the pipe. Excuse me if I'm wrong, or nine in one of the pipe. But like then you that. get the extended magazines for it, and it's a little longer. But since it's the single stack, I believe. Yeah. I'm um, obviously don't know this pistol that well, but that's my EDC. I, I love that thing because it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not as loud and like cumbersome as right. far as when you shoot with that 43. Because that 43 is fucking loud, man. Yeah. It's it's loud. It's loud and it sucks. Like yeah, that, it's not like a, it, it is not a fun. I I do not shoot that pistol for fun, but it's really small. Well, it's great for so like board shorts. It helps me. Yeah. It, it's just. Helps me, my, my life. You know what I'm saying? Got that little clip on it. Just clip mm -hmm. it on the inside of my Put pants. Put it right in your fanny pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's right a good fanny yeah. pack. When are we um, coming out with those free range fanny packs? They're, they're, have... they're out. I've just... So you want, you want to know... We haven't put them on the website. Pro level move right here. So when I had torn my bicep, I know whatever, blah, blah, blah. I had the one arm, right? The fanny pack, what I did is I hooked 550 cord in 
to my trigger guard. So it's a trigger. Correct. Just the trigger that yep. protects it. It's a Kydex one. Yep. But what I did is I tied this 550 cord into there. So when you pull out, it actually pulls the trigger oh, guard okay. off of it. Yeah, yeah. And so instead of having to do a motion where you're like, pull out, pull off the trigger, then drive the gun, it was like, ha, bah. And that was like, hey, I got one arm because he can't really pull it off. So right. it was like, there was my... There was my my EDC there for about two like or three that. months. I like Smart. it. I like it. Smart thinking. Yeah. Smart thinking. Smart thinking. Um, and what I need to do too is oh, you're not done with your guns. I'm just I get amped up on fire. I'm no, I, I I'm I'm just trying to go through the uh, the G43. I got I got this B and T nine mil that I really really like. Uh, Neil got it, so it's that uh, uh, pistol. Um, as we all know, it's a pistol. Because uh, it has the arm brace yeah, for better stabilization. It's a fucking pistol. With a, uh, a dead air suppressor. That's yeah. kind of what I've been rolling with. Um, as far as like the, the backpack interior truck gun. Uh, that's kind of what I've been rolling rolling around. So if I'm oh, doing yeah. a oh, yeah. little bit bigger, you know, something that's in the truck, not on me. That's kind of where I'm at right there. Because that thing is fucking incredible. I love that gun. Um then as we get a little bit bigger, I've got this LWRC uh, that I've I've shot forever. I had it, uh, I've had it for over ten years, that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, it's five five six, and uh, the as we start to get into the bigger calibers, honestly, I I don't shoot anything other than that Seekin six five, and I've shot that Seekin six five. I have other I have other ones like three three Lapua mags and things like that, but they're they're almost fucking horrible. They're they're not fun to shoot because. They, they've got big fucking comps on them and they're either really heavy or they're really light. And the, 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 not the recoil, it's not that, but man, they are so fucking loud. But that 6.5, man, yes, I understand it's heavier, but that Seekin 6.5 is such a fucking awesome rifle. I love that thing. Then you got what? What are those 20 round boxes, Logan? <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're nasty. Like, if I'm running that like that that perfect scenario with that Seekin six five, the twenty round box, and that's all like that alpha munitions. Yeah, I think you got so the, it's loaded to the grain. It's fucking crazy cool. You got that Mark V loophole. Yeah, there, with right? a loophole. Yeah. I think that's my Mark next 5. purchase. It's Mine it's crazy. A long gun. I want a really, really but, good long but gun. But I haven't got yeah. my my rifles yet from uh what is it? Suppressed weapon systems. Yeah. I haven't so that 308, I ordered one like Matt. Matt has this 308 that I'm, I fall in love with. I think it's fucking awesome. So uh I actually we should go down and get that today. No, no, no. You're well, you had the 308, but the seven millimeter is the one you That's fell in love seven, with. That's a seven, yeah. The yeah. seven mil is but you can like build stupid. that chassis into a 308. Right. I think that thing hits hard as fuck. Plus, you would never know you're shooting a, a seven millimeter because the way that they put those baffles in the barrel. They're actually pretty light for that chassis. Right. And I just, something about having that extended baffle in there, just it takes so much of that recoil away that it makes it fun to shoot that heavy of a round. You can, I wouldn't suggest it in these times to shoot a hundred rounds through that thing because that's a lot right. of fucking money, but. What, 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 what were you wanting to talk about? Because I, I'm fired up about this gun talk right now is what I'm fired up about. Well, you're going to talk well, about other guns. Yes and no. So I kind of told you guys, but I got, so I'm building a walk-in safe room just because yes, every, every man you are. Need, yeah. needs one. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got my plans back and I've never like pre-come so fast in my uh, life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I started thinking about all the opportunity I have to like build my loadouts and everything. Right. And I'm fucking amped because we're going to have like the ARs that are suppressed with all night vision packets and yeah. everything in there. And it's like, and then I was thinking, I'm like, this is a little excessive. And then I started thinking, like, why do I work and work this hard over the years? I'm like, to have Dude, kind of uh, my own uh, arsenal and exercise yeah. my constitutional rights. And I'm really excited. But I do want to develop, and I think some people make it, but they need to make a bed Kydex holster. Because I was thinking about that for my AR. I sleep with my AR every night, right? Because I've gotten plenty of death threats over the years. But they they need a system that, like, clamps on. I've seen a couple, but not how I want them to. So if, imagine if you drilled it into the side of your bed frame. Yeah. So like fucking yeah, I know what you're talking about. dogs light up or intruder comes in. All you're doing like is a reaching holster. right here and then just coming right in with your AR instead of having to like reach over. And granted, I'm a little different. I don't have kids. So it's easier for me like to take that out of my safe and put it next to my bed before I go to sleep. Yeah. You know, I'm not, and you could do that if you had kids, obviously. If you're I just put, super them next, safe I put my rifle next to my kid's bed. Oh, okay. Because that way... 
if they get out, then they can bring it down to me. <laughs> yeah, Daddy, yeah, yeah. Here's it's your... safe. It's a joke. Everybody. She knows yes. how to throw it, throw it to him perfectly. <laughs> what's a, what's a, do you have a rifle or a pistol, any type of firearm? Do you have something that you you want to own that you do not have yet? A 20 yes. millimeter? I yeah. mean, I technically own it. I'm just, you know, paperwork and it takes a long time to build. Right. No, okay. I think for me, like, because as a kid, I always shot 30 out sixes and stuff. And for me, I've I owned so many tactical rifles in my day sure. that now I'm starting to get it really into like, not the super long range stuff that like Logan's super proficient with, but like we're 800 yards seven, in, seven. I can reach out and touch any animal. Right. And that's kind of been my thing now because I have like my seven millimeter. I have my, uh, my 308. Uh, Nosler just built me this fucking epic Nosler 33. They built you one too. I didn't know they made such nice guns. And again, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I went out whitetail hunting and shot, I think it was a 31 Nosler or something. Um, it was uh, one of my buddies. It's to crazy. Kill. Dude, they shoot so nice. They're all carbon fiber. So they're insanely light. What is it? What do you think that you picked that thing up in Texas? That was like three pounds? Yeah, because it's a proof barrel with a carbon fiber stock. Yeah. The, the, the heaviest part of that rifle is the action, yeah. which is fucking nuts. Once you put rounds in it, what's it a five round box you think yeah yeah right so yeah. like that it's it, it's super light that thing's what six pounds high point yeah if yeah it's it's nuts how light that thing is and that's a 3-3 nosler that thing is it's cool I can't wait to shoot it I built that I built that 3-3 Lapua mag uh, two years ago and that's um, and that's the, one of the coolest rifles that I built but it's also the the worst rifle I've ever built because shooting it feels like a mule is kicking you in the fucking forehead every time you shoot it and you have to wear, put a mouthpiece in it because, <laughs> because it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I was on, I was on one, one of the podcasts, uh, surgeon, was it? No, McMillan was on their podcast and they sent me a stock for free and then proof. Uh, I knew the guys up at proof, proof research and they sent me that barrel for free. So I just talked to the guys at Defiance and Defiance Actions were like, yeah, we'll fucking throw an action in there. And then um, the dudes from um, Warfighter Tobacco. Yeah. Uh, they used to build a bunch of stuff. He's, he, he actually- He's a silencer shop. Yeah. So he put all that stuff together for me. I was like, oh, this is going to be so cool. Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. And then I pick it up and it's the same thing. It weighs like six pounds, but it's a 338 Lapua mag. And it, 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 it literally feels like you're shouldering a howitzer yeah. and it's so fucking nasty. And I put the trigger, the trigger is like a half pound trigger on it. <laughs> so on you it. just got to sneeze on it. Cause that's what I told him. I was like, Hey man, I want something that's like ridge to ridge. You know, I want to be able to like literally just flat plane shoot an elk at like, you know, eight hundy with limited to zero doping, you know, yeah. hold high fucking plow through the wind. Let's go. And what's um, dope mean for the audience, Logan? Uh, that is the amount of elevation that you need to put on your scope, depending on how far your distance is. Yeah. Uh, to accommodate that, for it's a cool rifle, yes. but I hate shooting it. Yeah. So the moral of the story is you can have, uh, too much caliber and too light of a rifle. It is possible by the way, it's nasty. Uh, but I think if I were to screw a big suppressor on it, I think that would be, um, I think that would probably, you know, obviously deaden, help. deaden a little bit and it would help it. But fuck man, even the, the comp that I have on that thing is probably six inches long and it's nasty. Logan shot it with me. Yeah. Dude, where did Logan, we shoot? Did we shoot that out at Desiree? We shot at the ranch. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cause you had your. You had your 6.5 six, five five. out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that thing, it, it kicks pretty good. Now, mine I'm going with like, I've been working on these platforms for a while. So it was like, my shotgun is done. It's the coolest, you know, it's got an EOTech. It's got the grip. It's got, it's got a six surefire with a crazy muzzle brake on it. And it's got the stock. So it's like a, a combat shotgun. Then I've got 
my fully tricked out Arsenal Democracy AR. That is my favorite AR. And then I've got the the, the M14 that's completely done with the mm-hmm. Sage stock. It's got a yeah. nice Leopold scope. It's got the bipod. It's got everything on there. So now the two and pieces- And you can do bicep curls with that thing because it's fuck, like 15 dude, that pounds. that thing is so heavy. <laughs> um, but the two things I'm missing now is I want a really cool sub platform like a Chris Vector that's got a nice light and hollow sight on the top. And then I want to do a really cool- Long range rifle, like maybe a Chi Tech, but they don't make the Chi Techs anymore. You don't want that. You know, I don't want a Chi Tech. You don't want that. No, you don't want that. I just wanted a Chi Tech after watching the movie. Shooting. Yeah, no, they, it's a real, it it's looks a great cool. Gun. Yeah. It, but they don't make them. I, I don't. I don't think you can get that. That round has been kind of like obsolete for a while, right? Because mm-hmm. I think that was like a four ten, something a like four fifty five like, or something like that. It was, it was, it was, it was weird. a weird. It was a weird round, but like basically. Uh, from what I understand, like the, the rounds have just gotten way, way better as far as like precision rifle has really advanced the, the entire game. And they've really kind of coalesced around a six fives, a fucking great round. And when you start climbing in, in size, you're not necessarily even climbing in size, you're climbing in just velocity, just mm-hmm. punching a, 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 a relatively small round a long way. Uh, but I don't know. There's some fucking badass chassis out yeah, there. Yeah, I want to make like, a cool really long gun. Because all of these that I'm naming too, they're all FD, they're all 10 FDE too. So once they're all done, I want to hang them all together, you know? I want, I want really one cool. of those Q yeah. fixes is what I want. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been able to get one of those yet. Like, they, they're, they're always out of stock. I fucking love that. That gun looks really cool. Jared, you do need to build a sweet sub gun because like I have yeah. two that are my favorite. I have my AR Platform 9mm. That's awesome. And I got to give it to Sig. Sig MPX with my suppressed one. I have two of them. Yeah. Those things are yeah, just like- Yeah, I want like, a sub, man. I want a cool so sub. Dope. I've always wanted I a I can't vector, believe you man. don't have one. I don't know. I just, I've, I never, dude, it's always another AR or- You have a something. 1976 fucking cop car in your garage, but you don't have a sub gun. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 1971. I just want an Dodge Valero, okay. thank you. Okay. MP5K okay. that's suppressed. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah but that's like school. gold. That's like trying to buy a gold bar. Yeah. That, that's, that's like twenty five thousand dollars. Way yeah. out of my budget. Yeah. yeah, there was somebody selling two the other day for like seventy grand. Yeah, like it's brand crazy. new in like the boxes Matt, too. Matt just said that's way out of his budget. Yeah, I, he no said thanks. I'm building a walk in safe. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's out of my budget. Of my it's budget. not okay. Listen, okay. First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Liberty Safes, the best premier safe company made in America. So I got my safe door from them. Thank you, Kyle. (laughs) And they're they're the best in the game, in my opinion. Uh, And I got the safe door. And then the rest of it is literally putting together, yeah, you can judge all you want, concrete around it, and then I have to build shelving. So relatively, you just need space to do it. Yeah, but you know what? You're going to get done with that. And then you're going to be really jealous of mine because mine is really cool. Yeah, but you're right. gonna have like wacko fucking tactical shotguns in there. I'm gonna yeah. have like I'm gonna have cool. Yeah, shit. but it'll look no, practical. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about the safe itself. Like I just had this meeting last week, and I was like, I want a fake bookshelf with a secret button, and then it goes to stairs under the house. See, with a that full bunk requires bunk money, on. not a concrete structure. Yeah, they, like but the concrete's pretty easy. Concrete's yeah. super expensive right yeah. now, actually. Which wow. I found out. It's actually cheaper than um, welding Lumber. metal walls that I would need because you can go safe two different ways, like those concrete or metal. I priced out the metal one and it was significantly more expensive. All right. So those of you that are listening is Matt decided to cut some corners financially on his safe. <laughs> <laughs> Just so... It's fucking... <laughs> It's, it's in a know. structure he that also has some corners on his fire suppression system. So, I mean, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the weak the weak points are on the uh, exterior flanks, just so everybody's aware. No, they don't know where the other shit is. But that's okay. Is. That one, that would be, be fine. I'll, when you, when you go through a secret passageway into the basement of mine, he's gonna he's right. gonna be like, "Damn it, I wish I would have done hey, this." Sure. But no. Logan, I'm really interested to hear what Logan like. Oh, what, what what's Logan Logan's well? fucking rifle pistol like? What what do you want? What's your really, what's, what's I, your dream? I really want to get one of those new Barrett sniper rifles. Mm. Oh, oh mm. interesting. Yeah the the MRAD. They got the big. Oh the MRAD. They big. They got the big Gov contract. I want to say it was like what close caliber to, is that? Fifty. So that's what's awesome about it is it's three different calibers. So it's wait three, integrated into one platform. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, so you just swap out the barrel and the bolt? You got it, buddy. And it's 308, 300 Norma Magnum, and 338. So what, you got what is, like what everything. Is 300, what's 300 Norma? I, what is that? I don't know too much about that mag. caliber, but yeah, I think it's pretty close to that. Okay. That's fucking wild. Why did they go 300 Norma? Um, I think that they just wanted to facilitate any type of ammo. So I was like, why are we going back to 308 after all these, after yeah. everybody's going to 6.5? And they're like, well, the military just has such a surplus of 308 that they need to be able to use that for yeah. training and whatnot. That so makes kept, sense. Yeah. So I just like that interchangeable barrel, like getting everything did, out of that one. So, you know, for my next Christmas present, you guys know. Does that yeah. have we'll the tell, internal- we'll tell Heather. Does that still have the? You want to get him the, that M red? <laughs> Does that still have that internal spring system, to, like the the Barrett? Doesn't the Barrett have some like? Uh, no, I know they no, do. It's got no. some kind of. Oh, it doesn't. Like like the M eighty two. Yeah, the fifty. No, no, no. It, it's just a bolt action. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's always been my philosophy with firearms, though, because people, I, I think all of us have gotten the question of what what's the best EDC, what's all that, and it always starts with like, what are you most comfortable with? Yeah. And then for me, across the board is like, I try to have recreational and then tactical rifles that however I need to implement them, I have like my one go-to. So I have like, you know, I got like fucking 15 ARs, but like there's one that if I need to pick it up and use, that's the one. And that's just like my sub gun, I have my, the one MPX that's just a tack driver. And obviously you've seen that a lot with when we shoot the Christmas steel stuff because it's, they're just so quick. And then... So it's like each firearm, I have that one. And then you start playing around with the fun stuff for like recreational uses. And then I got like three hunting guns that are like zero to perfection. So I can absolutely, I know, make an ethically shot, ethical shot with it. And then finally, for me, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but like people are always like, oh, you need a 6.5, you need this. It's just like, I've bought so much ammo over the last 15 years that like I rely on like 9 mil and 5.56 and then I have 308. So I'm like, I would, I don't want to be the guy that has like, 10 different variants of firearms and then 50 or hundred rounds per firearm. Right. At least I know like if shit ever hit the fucking fan, you know, like I have firearms and a decent amount of surplus of ammo to like, you know, keep people safe. Yeah. Did you say S H T F? What's that? Shit hit the fan. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the, no big deal. Is that the thing? Yeah. That's the uh, thing. Yeah. What's your, <laughs> So that's it, huh? For you, Logie? Oh, that's and you um, got? I really want one of those Noveski Space Invaders. Yeah. I'm I'm such a I fanboy over Noveski shit a lot. They make great shit. I tried to get their latest drop and I couldn't even put the the rifle in the cart before it was gone. Damn. Oh. It seems like you know somebody over there. I do. I'm like, oh, and weird. I, I keep talking to them and they're like, right. yeah, yeah, we'll get you. We'll get you. We'll get you. And then I can't even. I think the final. Yeah. I want to go down to Neil's like right now. Yeah. I I want to go down there right now. That's the worst decision ever. We would go spend money. It's like going to the grocery store when we're hungry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But you're spending it with your friend Neil. So it's okay. You don't feel as guilty. It's a business stimulus. Yeah. Neil. Neil doesn't let me buy (gasps) anything either. He lets me try before I buy. I know what I want. What? There it is. So I have my 500 Buff Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I follow her on Instagram. It's good I respect the fuck out of Neil. I had Who's a wonderful sushi lunch with him, with Neil and Cookie. <laughs> but I should tacticalize like a 44 Magnum or a 500 Magnum, put like a red dot on there, see if I can get a suppressor on there. Just yeah. make it like yeah. the dopest wheel yeah. gun. You may even try to find one that's got like an eight, eight cylinder in yeah. it or something. Bro. Yeah. That would I, be just- I want to do that too. I want to like, I want to get a new 4570 because I just love shooting. My dream, so my hey, dream my, gun, which I don't action. think you could find is I would love to get an HK Mark 23 with the laser unit and the suppressor. Huh. Mm. Like I don't think you can I, even find those anymore. I, I was thinking about that. You know, those stagecoach guns- that they used to have mm-hmm. the little shorty yeah. 4570 with, with the barrels. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I I was actually thinking about that the other day was 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 trying to to uh do like a Cerakote, you know, Picatinny rail stagecoach gun 4570 that's like legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put a fucking uh red dot and a laser on it. If and, we find a stagecoaster, I got the horses to pull it. 
No, I, we, I have, I have a, I have a, no, I have a truck. I have a, I have a truck that has plenty of horses that can pull me around. <laughs> um, that was a good dad joke. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. That's what I, I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start tacticalizing old school weapons because that's really fun for me. Because you run the AR platform, so I need a wheel gun that's tacticalized, and then I just thought like a thirty thirty, maybe a different round, but lever action. Yeah. You know, lever action, lever stage action. Coach gun. You like you you, you weld in like a Picatinny side rail on yeah. there, and you put Tech <laughs> fifteen. Yeah, you get like oh, a thermal yeah. on top, and it's just yeah. like, dude, it's yeah. like steampunk. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. We should start steampunking some shit. Steam dude, punk you know firing. what I want? I want that fucking shotgun from Jurassic Park one. The spaz. Yeah. Yeah, those are also extremely difficult to find. Really? Though. Yeah. Damn, is, that well, so, I, is that similar to like the Terminator shotgun that he carried in T2? No, Arnold, the it was, no it's the, it, it's a cool looking shotgun. It's got I that little fold out buttstock. Yeah, butt it's got a fold out buttstock. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. I have uh, uh, <laughs> something I bought a long time ago, which is a uh, Sega. Uh, oh my God. You I've have got a Sega. A Sega yeah, I have a Sega <laughs> like AK 12 gauge. Yeah, so, so do I. <laughs> With it, did I leave mine in your safe? Is that what this no, is? No, remember we used it in uh, vet, Vets vs. Horror. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't know you had one. I literally yeah. bought one for that. Skit oh, yeah, that's right. Like, that's what you stoked. used for that scene. I yeah. got a so mine is a Krebs. So you guys that are AK heads will understand the the Krebs uh, customization for AKs. It's next level. Their, their shit took a year. So this was even back in the day. When I was contracting, it took me a year to get this fucking Krebs custom AK. It was a custom uh, AK 12 gauge. But having, uh, I think it's like a 10 or 12 round fucking AK box, like magazine, dude, it's nasty. That mm-hmm. thing is oh, yeah. nasty. Yeah. You're it's taking off. Crazy cool. You're going full John Rambo. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that, that was my home defense rifle for a long time, especially in Colorado because I lived up in the middle of the mountains and I was well, like, yeah. none of him. I had, I had bears on my porch all the time. I had these stupid fucking black Yeah, but those were, those were my... you know, mid 40 year old nice men that were a little overweight that were wanting you to come hang out. Yeah, but you can't trust them <laughs> nonetheless. I, I still- they get touchy um, on the ride. Maybe yeah. a listener would know, but I, I, I still want to- figure out a way to put a laser, like a PEC-15 or thermal laser on a bow. Like, mm. yeah. that would be so much fun. To yeah. Do they that. have, do they that have it. Compensation I am not, there. there's a couple, but they're trash that I've seen. Maybe really? I haven't seen them all. But going out and like doing a night shoot on targets or 3D targets yeah. with under fucking nods. Think about the experience, especially if we took some adaptive guys so out and put them back under do. nods. Be what so we, easy to do. What if we you did a cast? Because you'd have to dial. You, you could dial you, your dope on there, but you dial it in at like thirty yards, and then you Kentucky windage the rest. It's not like you're shooting animals with what it. If, so who cares if you sling it around? What if we did a calf life where we all went to an arm show with Evan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so how much for this SA eight <laughs> as Earl? Like a as Soviet as arms trade show. <laughs> <laughs> Man, wouldn't that be interesting I to go to like a- I think we should try go. <laughs> there, we, there was a black market back in the day. There was like a black market just outside of Kirkuk. And I went through that thing one time and it was so interesting. It was like a, a weapons flea market and they had all kinds of fucking weird ass shit there. Uh, it, was, it was a really interesting experience. But Kirkuk's in Iraq, everybody. Yeah, so Kirkuk is in all Iraq. you fucking low people like a, chill out. So tell us yeah. about these new 2021 2S6s. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't it be fucking cool to yes, go to it a would. no shit like like black arms? Like oh, I'm picking up an RPG the first time I get one. Oh, bro, yeah. I'm gonna I'm, buy I'm gonna, an SA fucking seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd want a dishka. Yeah, that's what I would want to get is a yeah. dishka to put it on top yeah. of the building. Yeah, dishka. you know what I mean. <laughs> get three dishkas. Yeah. I bet yeah. we could get a pack of dishkas. Yeah, let's cover down, right? Yeah, no, yeah, we're yeah. probably going to need four. In Do we know anybody in the fire. Fire. <laughs> That's true. That's that's very true. Yeah. How how fucking fun would that thing be though? Like we could gear that thing up. You know we you know what we could do is we could take like a skid steer and a dishka. Oh and then put the skid steer and the dishka together and be driving around fucking ka, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah you've got yeah. armor and tracks. The armor tracks. No, you know, I think you're right though, because isn't the SA series like four barrels? What's that four barrel anti aircraft uh, gun that the, that's I don't know the Zeus 23 4? Yeah, 23 millimeters. There you go. 
four of them. Put one of those yeah. on a skid steer and fucking drive that thing around, but then level the guns. Well, they got wait, one wait. that's two. So there's a there's a just a a surface to air artillery piece that's just a two two twenty three millimeters. I would never, ever, 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 ever want this to happen to our country, okay? Just prefacing this. Correct. But can you imagine if Texas as a state had to make an insurgency? Like, think about, there'd be like fucking dishka mounted fucking John Nuts. Deers, dude. It'd be the dude, I'm just saying. Like, cause I every mean, Texan's always like, hell, I'll wild that motherfucker and I'll get that thing running. Yeah. Like, just like fucking dual 50 cows on like In a John Deere just cruising minutes, down the street. You're right. 15 minutes after secession fucking dudes would be having have all their farm equipment converted over <laughs> to basically to technicals. technicals. You're right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it would, be like, it would be nuts. It'd be nuts. Something about having a, a dual dish set setup where you've got those like large iron bars that go on your shoulders and you've just got yeah. the two dishkas, you know, kind of like yeah. the old, uh, the dual fifties that were on ships back in the day for yeah. anti-aircraft. Like, I knew an 18 Bravo that had a lot of downtime that welded mm. 350 cals into one. Like he built a bracket for three of them. Yeah. And then they all intersected. The rounds intersected at 200 meters. So they were yeah. all canted in oh. a little bit. <laughs> what imagine had, we had the 350s. Like, we, just, we had <laughs> one. <laughs> we, we, had a, we had dual saws. So we had the mounts oh, with the dual saws with the center butterfly. Yeah. And those things were fucking nasty, bro. That they is were a lot nasty. of firepower. What about like, like, Well, no, you could, you could mount 240s or saws. So it was a center butterfly with two, either 240s or saws. Yeah, the butterfly wasn't just like the 50 cal butterfly yep. kind of trigger yep. switch. Yep. Yeah, that worked in the What about system. like yeah. two dishkas mounted on a front end loader? Uh, so yeah. you can stand on that and then you can adjust your elevation from there. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I mean, that's a, that's a, it's slow on the elevation adjust. Just think about the farmers know. that would be like, they, they've got their crop duster planes. Oh, Lord. They've yeah, got yeah. all their, you know, uh, tractors. 650 and boxes and fucking, of surplus dude, hand grenades. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Texas would be a fucking crazy place. Like, it would be crazy. It would be even crazier than it already is. Best state in the union, bro. <laughs> That's my opinion. What if we did you know an infomercial for General Evans' surplus uh, subscriber box? And it's like he plays an army general. He's just shipping out. If you sign up for a subscription, you just man. Get if this was oh, a few man, years, I got sixty grenades. If this is a few years <laughs> earlier, mystery right box. To, if this was a few years earlier, you know it would play really well. It's like. A, a Russian accent where it was like the <laughs> General you know, Evan, Comrade Evans. Comrade yeah. Evans surplus ammunition box. It's like, you yeah. need extra tank? Here you are. Here yeah. you are. Comes in mail, subscriber. <laughs> subscriber first, you know. Comrade Matt, what yeah. did you get this month? Six hand grenades, AK 47, and looks like big munition goes blow up big. <laughs> you, you celebrate six months with us, we give you MiG 29. <laughs> <laughs> One year subscriber gets nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Great. Hey, what right. did I get this month? Oh, that's cosmonaut spacesuit. So <laughs> you get what's on surplus, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. You have it. It's like anti-aircraft, anti-aircraft missile, uh, anti-space rocket. It's like fucking rockets and missiles, yeah. all kinds of crazy ass <laughs> shit. Sixteen kilograms of depleted uranium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Used with lead suit. Yeah, make sure you use the lead suit. <laughs> Comes with free uranium, like thermometer. Oh, what the fuck they're called? Gauge. Yeah, I don't make know. sure you use tongs. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, fuckers. This has been Free Range American. See you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.